Hey everybody, it's Friday again, time for another video. Uh, today, it's going to be a, a, a fun vid. Today we're going to do something a little different. We had a request from a really good uh, subscriber on YouTube, Tom. Had uh, He's always been curious when he sees me this time of year doing all the molds up and he's, he's saying, you must have quite the collection. Is there any chance to see it? So what we'll do is we'll, I'll just show off where all my stuff is today and you can see how many molds I have. So just before we get going, I just want to talk quick. Uh, in the last video, I talked about doing legs and getting the legs attached with hot glue. Now I want to uh, show you now, they're all glassed in. I just finished this morning. Uh, been a little lazy the last couple days, but what's really important with these, with taller ones, or ones that are gonna be heavy, like these guys, you want to try and get as many points of contact as you can within reason without it being too clunky so here's the big venus here she is so each one it has three legs so it's gonna be like a little tripod setup so it has three three points of contact with with the main body right so you're attached to the flange and you're attached to here right and then this buttress is put in here. So all you do is I just cut it out on my jigs with a jigsaw or I've got a bandsaw for the end of the two by four to fit onto there, hot glue it, and then start uh, glassing. So there's another one, and then there's a third up here. And it's the same for this one, attached on the bottom, a little buttress in the middle, and another one on top. We'll come around this way. So there. One in the middle, and of course the base, right? So you can't go any higher. You can't put one here because you're onto a different detachable part of your mold and you, your mold won't be able to come apart if you uh, do that. So just, it's something you have to consider when you're making the, the mold, when you're doing the, the glassing. You have to sort of think ahead of where, how you're gonna be glassing this up and how you're gonna be able to support it with legs. So keep that in mind well in advance. Sort of some people do that when they, they look at the model before they even touch it with rubber. They imagine in their head what it's gonna look like, where the seam's going, when it gets glass on it, what the legs are gonna look like, and you have that all in your head before you even put a lick of uh, rubber down on it. So here you can see this is an angel. It's got a couple attached to the base, a couple attachments right onto the wings. Uh, this is a bird bath base. So it has three of these legs, one on the other side. So it's attached here on the bottom of the flange, it's upside down, right? And then a couple buttresses, one on the other side. And here's the big Ganesh, right? So attached here to the base, and then a buttress in the middle. Let me just spin it around. This one has a small buttress in it here. And the other side here, it's attached without a buttress, but just with glass in between. So these all have to be, uh, uh, finished up uh, they need a sand and the legs cut to length uh, proper length uh, just another quick tip I'll tell you is uh, I've covered it in other videos but I'll just mention it again when you're cutting your legs to put them on your your piece um, I never measure up and do exactly to here and then add two legs of the same height because what can happen is your flange might be uneven and by quite a bit you might have a bump or a lump or a little warp going in or out and you'll put that leg on that's exactly the same height as this and it's not going to work out for you and then you can't trim it to make it to length so i always go about an inch higher and then i'm going to mark it out with a level and then come back or my laser level and then i just take a jigsaw and i cut across to the right height so yeah if, if you just cut them all to the right size and put them on matching the glass because the glass is going to be your rest on this one you could be in for a problem you could be out a half an inch or so and it's going to wobble back and forth and you're going to hate it so just a little tip so anyway i've talked too much already and uh, we'll cut this off and we'll go on a little tour okay gang hey gang i just wanted to show you this quick <clears throat> so here's my laser level set up on my tripod i've got a little windy handle here so there's my piece the two legs so all I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna wind it down there can you see it's just because that piece of glass is gonna be also a rest piece it's gonna be like the third part of the tripod there so you're just gonna want to get that laser just right on the very top of it up there right so then of course you can't cut you can't use your jigsaw to cut across because you got the you're gonna block the line so all I do is I just come quick 
with my little um, angle thing here and stick it on there and a quick little line across there, a pencil line, and away I go and then I just cut it off and away to go. I just I just wanted to show you guys that while I was doing it there. Okie doke. I'm back. I forgot to mention something. Uh, I just wanted to mention, uh, I, I mentioned in the last one, I'll let you know. So that's just the rubber and the fiberglass and the wooden two by four legs. So I just weighed it up just before I started the last little video there and it's 73 pounds or about 73 and a half, so about 33 and a bit, I think, uh, uh, kilograms. And so that's that's empty without uh, without the uh, concrete in it yet. So it's probably gonna be a couple hundred pounds of concrete, I'm guessing. So it's gonna be a good lift off the V-table. <laughs> I've already talked to my buddy next door and arranged for, for help for lifting. So uh, anyway, we'll keep you posted when we do a pour on that big girl. I just, I just wanted to, I promised that I'd give the weight, so I just wanted to make sure I did that. Okie doke, let's just start here. I grabbed these out from, it's kind of a mess because I've got all my models and stuff still out. So underneath that table there are these guys. Here it's just a bunch of standalone latex mold without uh, glass on them different shapes and sizes and little statues and there's probably 30 40 in there I guess and then here I don't use a much uh, a lot but they, they're good sellers these smalls this is what I when I first got in the business I bought this from a guy uh, somewhere in the states I can't remember and he was uh, closing down his business he was 70 something years old so uh, I got a whole ton of these uh, ABS molds like a, a schwack of them and I think I paid 30 bucks for these two big containers full of uh, all these molds like I said I don't pour them a ton uh, but I do they're nice fillers in the store you know they're cheaper items they sell for 10 15 20 bucks that kind of thing um, but it's a nice price range so somebody can you know at least come in and get something they don't have to always get the expensive stuff so uh, there's those and then under here, I don't know how well this is going to show up. I have some ben bench legs and bench molds, uh, ABS, and I've got some uh, plastic as well. You can see I have three. I don't know if you can see the one in the back. There's one, two, and one behind that one. Uh, these are birdbath bases, the plastic. Not crazy about these type of molds. Uh, I got those when we first opened, too, uh, from a place in, in Ohio, I think and uh, it's no longer there but they're they're a bit of a pain to open and, and they leave big seam marks which I'm not fond of uh, in the back you can see I got some big uh, ABS plastic molds for doing like tabletops rounds and squares and some melamine in there for some pre-done pre-set up for uh, uh, benches as well so what we're gonna do next we're gonna go for a climb up there and see we're up in the loft, so I'm actually going to walk through here so you can see, but you can see the ceiling's only about four foot high, and unfortunately I'm five foot eight, so I'm a short ass, but not, not short enough to walk around standing up. So you can see I've got uh, some more uh, ABS molds here, a stack of them for big, making big tabletops. Uh, they're a couple inches thick, they're, they're really nice. Uh, for making tables and polishing them that and then people use them they make their own sort of setup at home so here's a big male torso some of you might remember from a few years back it's up here so you have to excuse the mess all this stuff over here I used to if people wonder why my name is the Grizz it's because it's for the Griswolds uh, I used to be one of those jackasses that put uh, thousands and thousands of Christmas lights on their house and I haven't done it for a few years now, so they're all up in here in bins, tons of it. So we'll go for a little walk and we'll look around at some of the molds. So there's some more bench leg molds here, large bowls, bird baths, pots. I'll give you a better look back here. Some more molds back there. These are some bench molds. When I get spare time, I just slap some bench molds together out of melamine. So if I want to make something, I just grab it and slap it together quick. There's a few more plastic ones here. So there you can see. 
many more. It's not the ideal place to put them, but at least I have a place to put them. They're out of the sun. I don't have any lights on them in here. Uh, so no UV. Uh, they don't freeze in the winter and they don't get too, too hot in the summer. But uh, it's enough. It's kept me busy for a few years. So I've got just one more room I'll show you. But here you can sort of see down at the shop. So that's all this year's efforts down there on the tables. Okie doke. See you in a minute. Okay, now we're here in my back room. Don't ask me how many. I've never counted or kept track. I probably could easy. My wife has a running inventory on them. So I probably could just sit down and go over the inventory of, uh, and just count up how many there are. But uh, it's hundreds. There's a lot. This room has been really handy for storage. I try and keep in here the items that I pour the most of in this room instead of having to go you can still hear I'm huffing and puffing uh, from going up and down the ladder um, yeah the stuff that you, you pour most often so uh, you don't have to rush up and down those stupid stairs to get ready for pours every day so these are the most used the biggest sellers are in this room here I know everybody likes to look at everybody else's stuff on the forum. We like that when uh, people show their their shops or where they pour and where they store their stuff. Everybody likes to look. Everybody likes to look behind the scenes too. They like to, if in a shot they see some different tools or something. I get questions all the time. People, oh hey, what's that red thing hanging on the wall? Is that a this or a that? And a, yeah, people people like to be nosy. You know, for your stick. Uh, tendencies of people but uh yeah there's a lot in here these are the only skins i ever made big ones i've sold a few over the years but uh big leaf skin gunneras but uh this rack will be full of course by the time i start pouring those guys outside but uh gives you an idea i hope of how many molds i have it's lots. I do have out in another room, I have um, what I started with years ago was stepping stone molds. I probably have, I don't know, 50, 60 stepping stone molds uh, outside. I haven't poured any. The only ones I pour now are just for myself, actually. Uh, if I need something at the house or for friends, I'll do them. But uh, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. It's, it's enough, enough to keep you busy. One day I might number them all and put little numbers on them somehow so i can keep track but uh i haven't but we'll see still young enough to keep going at it okay gang get you later hey i just want to try and do something here without saying the word okie dokes how's that uh, i forgot to mention here there's uh under all of my tables here i'm you've probably seen over the years if you're a regular follower i like to do hand-packed pots uh and bowls and stuff like that so underneath almost every table here is full of different shapes and sizes of bowls. You know, like pl plastic planters you can get at a home center. And uh, even like garbage cans and that, but turn them into pots. Uh, quite inexpensive, quick, easy way to make some pots. I'll go over here. There's some bigger ones down here. So from big to small, I got them all. And down there too. So yeah, I do a lot of that. I like doing them. But uh, those are, like I said, really inexpensive way to, to get started on pots and things without buying a really expensive uh, rubber mold or a glass mold. Uh, just go to your local uh, garden center and away you go. Okay, gang.